Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. I am super excited for what I've got to bring to you today. I received uh, a message from the folks at Diana Air Guns. That's Diana Air Guns of Germany. A very old, very reputable company. They've been making air guns for a really long time and they're capable of making air guns that have tremendous precision. And I love some precision air gun shooting. And they've provided me with an opportunity to bring to you some information about a couple of their rifles. Today on the bench, we've got a Diana Model 48, which is a side lever Springer air gun. Side lever. So if you're unfamiliar with a side lever, um, it is a similar mechanism to what most of us know as a brake barrel. The brake barrel, you've got the whole rifle, you grab the barrel, you bring it down, that's the cocking stroke that pulls back on a spring. When that's set, you load a pellet in, there are some that are magazine fed now, and then you bring that up, it locks in place, and you're ready to take the shot. The upside of a Springer is you don't need any support equipment. And if it's executed well, there are some very accurate Springers out there on the market and definitely some air guns that are worth trying out. Diana takes it with the Model 48 and puts their own twist on it. The Diana is a side lever. So instead of breaking the barrel, the barrel stays fixed in the action connected to the stock. You pull a lever back, you load the pellet in, you move the lever forward and it's ready to shoot. Now the upside of this is that you don't have, with that repeated action of opening and closing and opening and closing of the barrel, you don't have any sort of barrel droop. Now there are a number of manufacturers who make brake barrels who have various things that they've built into that joint to eliminate or at least reduce any barrel droop that you might find. But if you're concerned about longevity, it's hard to beat something that's fixed in the action. It is never gonna drop on you as the rifle ages. And we're talking about an area of air gun where with care and very simple maintenance, um, we're talking about air guns that should be heirloom quality that you can pass on to your kids. So if you're looking for an air gun that has really high-end features, and is gonna last the test of time, the Model 48, well, it's a review. We'll see how she shoots. But I think it's got the potential to really be something you're gonna to wanna to hang on to. And if you've got one in your collection, you're gonna to have to figure out which of your kids it's gonna to go to because it's probably gonna last you that long. So we're gonna take it right out of the box because that's where we are right now. And that's where she is. As cardboard boxes go, this is a nice layout, attractive. Um, you might not know much about Diana. Um, honestly, before I met the folks at Diana, I didn't know all that much about them. Um, they are a very old uh, air gun company. They've been making air guns for a long time and they absolutely know what they're doing. Um, over the course of their history, they have made air guns in Germany um, there was a time where that had to move and now has come back. They also partner with other companies who manufacture air guns to their specification and then they're distributed worldwide. And you might be familiar with some of those like uh, I've got an Airbug, little CO2 pistol, a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, repeater gets a good shot count. It's nice and accurate for a CO2 pistol. Uh, they make a PCP version of it. Um, and those are all part of their action line. This is part of their performance line. Um, these are all 100% made at their factory in Germany. If you want to see what that looks like, I would go over to the AEAC channel. Um, Steve did a really cool tour of the Diana factory, shows kind of how the whole operation works, and that's where this gun was made. And I'm super excited to bring it to you today. So, um, I haven't opened the box yet. I'm doing this with you guys. This is not an unboxing video, um, so Cyclops Joe, you can relax. But we are taking it out of the box, we're getting it ready, and we're going straight over to the bench to do some shooting. 
Um, oh yeah. So in the box, you get the typical manual type stuff. Um, and then here is the rifle. We're gonna set this down. I'm gonna have a look at the exciting part. The uh, rifle does come with iron sights and there is a dovetail to mount an optic on it. For today, we're gonna be shooting with the iron sights. And then um, we're actually gonna revisit this rifle after I've had some time to uh, work with it more in depth. And we're gonna come back sort of with a part two on this. But boy, look at that. Nice bluing. You can see that's the side lever action right there. It is dovetailed for a scope if you want to do that. You got your safety right there. Uh, rubberized butt pad or rubber butt pad. Take a look at the other side. It's a nice weighty gun. It's not too heavy. Um, but it does have nice weight to it. And then you got your iron sight, um, which is adjustable for elevation. And then your rear sight, which is adjustable for windage. So let's get over to the bench and see how she shoots because that's really the whole point of this, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we're on the bench, and this is the part that, well, it's the most fun of any kind of review. Um, we're gonna look at two different pellets today. First will be the JSB Exacts. These are the 8.4 grains. And then we will also take a look at how it does with the JSB 10 grains. And we're gonna give you some um, velocity numbers on these and then we'll go ahead and we'll do some accuracy with each of the pellets using the iron sights. Like I said before, we'll be coming back to the rifle in order to do sort of a follow-up after I've had the gun and worked with it for about a month. And I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing what this can do with a scope mounted on it. So be uh, stand by for that because that'll be in the future. Um, let's talk about how she shoots. So remember we talked about it being a side lever, right? You grab this up here, and I think you guys will be able to hear that ratcheting, you know, chick, 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 chick. Um, what you're doing is engaging a series of like anti-bear trap um, teeth, basically. And that's keeping this while you go in here to load the rifle, that's keeping it from really slamming shut on you. And that's important. Now on the bench today, I've got this bar under part of the bench. I trust it, but I haven't worked with it a lot. And I see some people when they use under lever and side levers, be really cautious about making sure this is secured. I don't have any reason to think that it's going to flip shut on me, but if anybody's concerned about why I'm doing it one way or another, that's it. Now you just take the pellet and you feed it into the breech and you wanna make sure that it's fed all the way in. These JSBs are very smooth loading, um, so they go right in, they're flush, no problem. Once you're ready to close the action, there is a button right here. Get that focused for you. And you're gonna push down on it. It's on the left side of the action right there. When you do that, you can move. There is no resistance on this at this point, and that just fits back in place and you're ready to shoot. Um, I say you're ready to shoot. There actually is also an automatic safety on there. So you need to push that forward. It is not resettable. So you push it forward and it's ready to fire. Nine hundred fifty-one feet per second.
but it's a very smooth cocking mechanism. Nine hundred fifty one feet per second. Oops. Don't forget the safety. Nine hundred fifty nine feet per second. Nine hundred fifty one feet per second. And I will say this trigger is really nice. Um, especially considering, you know, we're talking about a Springer. Um, it's it's not long and it has a, a definite stop and then just a little more and it goes. We'll get, uh, we'll get the trigger pull gauge out and tell you what that poundage is. Nine hundred fifty-nine. So, a five-shot group. We are within uh, under ten. So it'd be an eight feet per second extreme spread, um, and that average would be um, like nine fifty-five. So uh, that's that's smoking fast, but it's a relatively light pellet. Um, not super light by one seven seven caliber standards, but let's see what it does with the heavier pellet. I have the lab radar armed for a new shot string. We're going to go ahead with the JSB 10.3 grain pellets and we'll see what kind of spread we get here. Eight hundred sixty nine feet per second. Well, that action is just smooth. Eight hundred and sixty nine feet per second. And that should be a really nice speed for this pellet. Eight hundred sixty eight. Eight sixty five. Let's do one more. Eight sixty nine. So I think four out of five were eight sixty nine. We had one at eight sixty five. So you know, eight sixty seven, eight sixty eight. Really small spread. Really small extreme. Um, or sorry, extreme spread, really small standard deviation. That's pretty impressive. Um, wow. Let's get a target out there. Um, I'm actually looking at the wind right now and uh, give you guys a little look at that. So we'll put a target out there and uh, 
So we'll put a target out there and see what she can do. Okay, got a target set up at 15 yards. We're gonna be shooting open sights. Now I did uh, learn a few things while I was working through getting it sighted. Um, not only do you have a ramp adjustment on the front sight, but you also on the rear sight have both windage and elevation. So I played around with that a little bit so that I'm zeroed uh, at least pretty close at 15 yards. Um, I shoot a lot with scopes <laughs> and uh, using an optic and magnification is a lot easier than, um, than shooting open sights at distance, especially for precision. So we're looking at a, a really small target, but that's why we're here to shoot, right? Because it's fun and because we're gonna try and get to that highest level of precision possible. And so far, what I'm able to do with this rifle, I'm pretty impressed with. So we're gonna do a group with the 10.3s first. Because I think based on the speed that they're shooting, uh, this is ideal for this rifle. Here's the thing with uh, <laughs> shooting iron sights. You guys are gonna know what this group looks like well ahead of me because I gotta be honest, I can't really see that, that far with a 177 pellet on paper. I think my 55 year old eyes are definitely the limiting factor using iron sights. <clears throat> There is some felt recoil. Um, it's not, it doesn't feel like a harsh shooting cycle at all. Um, there's no unpleasant, you know, springy kind of thing. Um, it's, uh, it's really quite nice to shoot. Let's go down range and see what she looks like. Here's our target. For reference, that's all well under a one inch challenge coin. I'd call that a success for right out of the box and right onto the bench. Let's see what it does with the lighter pellets. A nice looking group um, in pretty windy conditions. I'd guess 10 mile an hour. Now we're only shooting at 15 yards, but I'm shooting iron sights and that's about the limit of what I can do with these eyes. But that's under an inch um, at 15 yards. No reason with an optic, this won't go out further. So looking forward to getting an optic on this and seeing what she can do. Um, something really light and uh, compact so it doesn't interfere with loading. I think it'd be just outstanding for this air gun. But let's shoot some more. Let's get five rounds from the 8.4 grain. 
and see how they compare. I'm jealous because you just got to see where that hit. And these targets um, are perfect for this kind of shooting. Iron sights, I can totally see where I'm aiming, um, but that 177 hole is just a little bit much without a pair of binoculars or something. Um, you guys are seeing this before I am. There's such a nice wide opening here. Um, it's very easy to load the pellet in um, and the cocking is quite smooth. Powerful gun though. And these are over 900 feet per second so she's uh throwing some power down range and it is nice to be able to just go out with a rifle not have to worry about a compressor or tanks or CO2 or anything like that. Um, so there really is a, a spot in, I think, everybody's collection for something like this. I can't remember if that was four or five. I think we always err on the side of let's shoot one more time. Unless you're in competition, then that hurts and you need to be sure. All right, let's go take a look. All right. Well, I think I like the group from the heavier pellets just a little bit better. Um, but I will say that definitely could be my lack of being able to see perfectly razor and crystal clearly using the iron sights. I'd say that's still pretty solid. And if we're gonna put a a marker on it. We are still easily center to center under that inch. So we're going to do a trigger pull test. Um, with a spring powered rifle, it's not a good idea to dry fire. So we do have a pellet loaded into the gun and that's gonna require us just to take a few extra precautions as we do the test. So I've got it lined up in a safe direction. I'm gonna double check it. We got the gun is clamped in and as much as we're gonna clamp it, and then we'll get you a number. one pound point three ounces I will tell you this 
if you forget the automatic safety, the trigger pulls a lot heavier. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. One pound, two ounces. Wow. One pound, 2.9 ounces. Just outstanding. <laughs> um, and it can be adjusted. So, wow. Let's go back over and uh, wrap this thing up. That's really nice. Where do you start talking about a high-end spring-powered air gun? Um, it lives up to its name. I mean, when they put uh, our mission is precision on the box, I would say that's exactly what you've got here. Um, 15 yards is about the edge of what I feel comfortable like really actually aiming at um, to give you a fair representation of a rifle's precision relative to iron sights. Um, just a hazard of being an old man and uh, having lost some of my close-up vision. So either I have to concentrate on the iron sights or concentrate on the target, but I'm not seeing both clearly. Um, this is a remarkably accurate rifle and I can't wait to get an optic on it to see what it can do. But that's gonna be in part two. Um, it's got a lot of power. Um, you're talking about 900 plus, I think it was 950-ish, maybe 960 feet per second um, with the 8.4 grain and a really comfortable and super tight spread on the 10.3 uh, grain JSBs. Perfect for pest control. Absolutely perfect for pest control. And I love that 10.3 grain pellet for pest control work. Um, the side action is really smooth and shooting off the bench, um, no issues at all making it, well, hit what I'm shooting for. Um, you know, when you're talking about 15 yards, back yards, going after pests, it's not super loud. And you are minute of squirrel, minute of chipmunk every single time. Minute of sparrow, no problem with this gun. Um, didn't talk about this before, but let's look at the stock for a minute. Um, it's, it's obviously, you know, a wood stock. It is ambidextrous, right? There's no like Monte Carlo cheek piece coming up one side or the other. So this is left-handed or right-handed friendly. Um, you have ambidextrous safety right here. I'm gonna push it forward. It's an auto reset safety. Every time you cock the gun, it's going in safe. So make sure you pay attention to that. It does not seem to be resettable at all. So once you've, uh, once you've pushed that forward, she's ready to fire. There's really um, no practical way to decock a Springer. Um, when you're done shooting, shoot the pellet. Um, that's like the reward you get for having cocked the gun. So I love the fact that this barrel is never gonna droop. It's all one part of the action and um, you have nothing to worry about there. Um, I would say that with Springer's, higher end Springer's, that's really a minimal concern but if you're putting money down and anticipating that you're gonna be able to hand this off to somebody generationally, um, I think you wanna know that it's gonna run well for them. Uh, Diana has been in the business for a super long time. So these designs have proven themselves over and over. And if you're not familiar with the Diana name here in the US, um, certainly they are over in the EU. Um, and it's a well-respected company. They have uh, local support here in the United States for parts or repair. So if anything happens that way, uh, you're gonna be covered. You're gonna be able to get parts. You're gonna be able to get this fixed. So it's not a, a company maybe that's only been around a couple years and you're not sure if they're gonna be around for a long time. You're gonna have access to replacement parts and probably for the foreseeable future. Um, so what do I like? Amazing trigger. Um, you know, just over one pound, less than one and a half pounds. 
Um, it's definitely got that two-stage feel. I mean, you put your finger on it, you pull back, you find the wall, and just a little bit more, and she goes. Um, it's reasonably easy to cock. Um, you know, maybe a little kid might have to work up to it, uh, but it's not unpleasant, and it's very smooth. You can hear that bear trap kicking into place. No reason to not trust that you're going to be able to get your fingers in there and load that pellet. And it's got, you can see, just a, a nice wide feed. But you can get my fat fingers. I have no problems getting those in there and getting that tiny 177 pellet loaded up. Folks, I can't wait to get a scope on this and see how I can push this out. Um, you're going to see in the next video um, probably some fun plinking um, as well as some pest control and uh, what it can do at a greater distance with an optic on here because the quality of this rifle just screams put a decent scope on me. So we'll see what we can get sorted out that way. And yeah, I think you're going to enjoy that. Um, there's going to be more stuff coming from Diana. I hope you look forward to that content. I know I'm looking forward to working with them. Um, certainly not exclusively, and I'll definitely be doing other things, but it's great to have a new company um, reach out and want to work with you. And I guess I'll just take a minute and thank you folks for that, because if it wasn't for people subscribing and making positive comments and giving videos a thumbs up because you like the style of what's here on the channel, um, companies wouldn't reach out and say, can we work together on a project? So um, any success that I've had in developing relationships is directly related to you guys and what you're doing when you're watching videos. And again, you know, the best way that you can, you know, pass something on to me is giving me a thumbs up, sharing it, subscribing if you haven't already. Um, and if you have positive comments, if there's questions you want to ask, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really wild about YouTube shorts when they first came out. Um, but I found that it's actually really easy to do a short video. You know, if you've got a question, hey, can it do this? Or what would happen if you tried that? It's actually fairly easy for me to reply to that in a short. And I did that just earlier this week with some questions somebody had on the Dragonfly. So if you have questions, throw them in the comments. And until the next video, everyone, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.